I hope you can hear me well. Excellent. So um, the, the timer has reached zero. I was curious what would happen uh, at this point. Um, and I want to uh, um, welcome you on behalf of uh, everyone who made this possible. And we'll get to that in a second to the first ever uh, distributes meeting here in Düsseldorf in this, in this uh, nice venue. And um, before we get into, uh, into the details, I just want to take the time to uh, uh, thank uh, a bunch of, of, of people and, and, and entities in general. First of all, uh, Heinrich Heine University, uh, which made it possible that we can uh, run this meeting in the way uh, that, that we are running it. So you just show up and we have a meeting and there's, there's not much else <laughs> to do. Uh, and we're very grateful for that. Uh, also, um, the Research Center in Jülich uh, for taking the edge off um, some of the real world annoyances that you still have to take care of if you, if you have a, a venue already delivered on the silver plate to you. And then also uh, Dartmouth College and the uh, Center for Open Neuroscience uh, in, in the exact um, uh, same role in organizing. And of course, uh, most thanks goes to you for, for actually showing up and m making uh, the meeting a reality beyond uh, somebody having the idea that we should have a meeting. So, so thank you for that. Uh, oh, I should mention before, um, before we go on uh, that we are uh, streaming this event, um, so everything um, ideally is communicated uh, out to the, uh, to the public. We have two cameras in the back. One camera is showing the speaker and the other camera is, is showing the stage. So if you are um, you know, not interested in being broadcasted to widely just be mindful of where the cameras are and where they're pointing and then uh, you can you can um, uh, act uh, accordingly we also have uh, two studio mics in the front uh, that we can use uh, for the interactions and i want to uh, ask you if you if you uh, ask a question make a comment um, that you please wait for the mic so that the people who are um, listening to the stream can also um, understand you uh, right, so on with the thanks, the, um, the meeting was uh, uh, in, in, in every sense of the word collaboratively organized. So uh, a lot of people uh, that you can see here on, on the screen have, have contributed to the fact that we actually meet at this, at this point. And um, you, can, you can kind of think as the, uh, the, the origin of the idea to be the two projects that you see at the bottom uh, Gidanex and, and, and Datalet and the people who are involved in these projects are also are also here, but by no means um, this is the Git Annex and, and Datalet meeting, and we named it Distributes for 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 a purpose uh, because it's it's what we want to be talking about is is basically distributed data, right? So we're not, you know narrowly focused on, on a specific implementation of one solution, but we're interested in an exchange uh, on the topic with people uh, that share you know, some aspects of, of that general mindset. So thank you. Um, why did we want to have that meeting? And um, I put these uh, three points here on that slide. They're actually not um, um, original because they are taken from the, uh, the, the, the homepage of the Debian conference uh, website. And I, I found them nicely fitting because the, the attitude and the, the intentions are, are very similar. We, want to, we wanted to have a face-to-face -face meeting and, and, and have that face-to-face -face meeting as a, as a space to, um, to, to introduce ideas and just you know, brainstorm and, and, and ultimately also you know, sit down and, and kick things off uh, together. And at the same time, we also didn't want to have it constrained um, to that room here in Düsseldorf, uh, to the people that could actually manage it, and that's why we're also streaming it uh, to, the, to the outside um, world in here. And in, in, in many ways, this meeting is, is a continuation of an effort that JB, uh, who is also here, uh, um, um, pursued continues to pursue in, in, in Montreal. And here's a, a picture from, from a meeting um, many, many years ago. And, and if, we, if we can establish that same kind of, of, of you know, joyful, you know, brainstormy-like atmosphere, then, then we've, we've accomplished everything um, we wanted to. Um, 
we have a, a series of, um, of, of matrix chat rooms that I think uh, most of you will know. We have a bit of a logistics section uh, soon. And in the lead up to the meeting, uh, we had a, a, a little bit of an exchange on things like when we started using Git and, and Git Annex and, and, uh, and I think what came out of this uh, this little exchange is uh, that that many people here in that room are using the same tools in in similar ways with similar ambitions for a long long time. So I think the the the, the audience is is the best possible that we could hope for uh, already for the exchange that uh, that we had in mind. And of course, uh, everyone has slightly different. Uh, you know, ideas and, and, and motivations for, for, for showing up here. And I think we can, I'm actually completely unaware of the time. So we have a lot of time um, that, uh, to, to, so we could just kick it off with a little bit of an exchange of, of what brings us here um, initially. And, and I, you know, I would like to ask Yarek and, and Joey to join me on the stage. And we can also pass around the, um, the, the audience mics uh, for anyone who wants to share what 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 brings them here? Right. So everybody filled out in the forums like why do you want to come to distribute, but that was personal kind of what is it like therapist session, right? We cannot disclose it, but that's why we are here now, maybe to talk about it together, right? Why why we've got here together and what was your motivation? Our motivation to a degree, or my own motivation, was that DataLat was originally a project which we worked together as our primary goal. Now we use DataLat as a tool, and we have many projects kind of building on top of it, and we kind of even lost connection, like what are we doing, right? So what are we doing in our day-to-day -day life? And we wanted, oh, let's meet together and talk about our project so we kind of align our interests. And that's why we are here talking about our project, some of ours, but also listening to you what you want to see in the land of distributed data versioning, right, or distributed data management, and what were your use cases. So, um, and maybe I'll pass on to Joy while you could just take a moment and think maybe how you could phrase what are your interests and maybe how you, maybe you want others to discover what you're doing so you establish new connections and new like networking right in in this audience uh, for me um you know I, I started building git annex about 12 years ago for trivial personal reasons um so it's really interesting to have so many people who are using data lad or are interested in data lad and also you know general distributed data um, systems and um so for me i'm really this is a great opportunity to meet lots of people who are either using Git Annex, maybe via Data Lad, and they don't use it directly, and also people who it just doesn't actually work out for, because that's really, you know, if you're in this room and it's not working for you, then that's, that's a gold mine as far as I'm concern, concerned, because it gives me ideas, which is the most important thing that I get from my users, and Git Annex wouldn't be where it was without um, my users who have given me so many ideas and data lad who has given me so many ideas and supported me as well so yeah um, that's my motivation and I would love to talk with as many of you as possible <laughs> and I have sports shoes I could run through the audience so uh, just raise your hand if you oh and there is also Stefan to cover that side anybody wants to say anything or I'll, I'll, I'll put my finger into the audience you don't want that okay Philip okay you take that side I'll take this Hi, I'm Philip Durbin from Dataverse, and I'll be giving a talk tomorrow, but uh, yeah, to give a little preview. Um, I feel like this conference uh, completes me, perhaps, because <laughs> I'm, I'm coming uh, from a perspective of a lot of metadata and um, making data discover, uh, discoverable, uh, the FAIR data principles, and uh, yet we get in our community a lot of discussion about uh, you know, distributed data, how can we mirror the data, how can we make it like a CDN or more available. So I'm just hoping to learn a lot, um, get some fresh perspectives uh, from this conference. So thank you. Anybody else or you'll have to hear me or listen to me for all the time. That's also not advantage. 
Yeah, hi, uh, Wolfgang Trailer from uh, Sinkenberg Institute in Frankfurt. Uh, I'm a, an ecologist. I work with large data sets, and all my um, colleagues also. And uh, over the years, I have uh, uh, pressured my peers to work with Git. That was already a great step. Um, I have been, <laughs> yay. <laughs> Um, I personally have managed my files with Git Annex for many years and um, still not at the stage where I can really use Git Annex or Datalad for my research because there's a big threshold for people um, coming from ecology who don't have the computer science background or, in, or even Linux background. So um, I'm curious uh, to connect with um, uh, people and developers to see um, where uh, there are uh, points where how I can bring um, this into my uh, working groups and um, increase a reproducibility and reliability of our research. Um, Joelle Barabucci, University of Cologne. Um, I probably want to follow up on what uh, person just said about uh, another kind, another typology of users. I am in computer science, uh, but I'm also, um, have been for many years a part of the team leading the so-called data center for the humanities at the University of Cologne. And the kind of people that talk to the data center for the humanities are people that have a certain threshold when it comes to technical complexity. And git -NX, uh, of which I'm a personal user for 10 years now, and similar products are definitely not cutting it for them. Also because, uh, in comparison to what many people are doing, like uh, sharing data in a fair way, many people in the humanities must not, uh, or have a mandate not to share their data for many years. So we're talking about non-fair kind of sharing, or partially fair. So these are kind of um, gray situations uh, that current tools do not completely address. So I'm all ears, and I'm very happy to be your gold mine of problems. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, hello. Uh, my name is Johannes, Johannes Hörmann, at, uh, from the University of Freiburg. Um, I'm anchored there in the engineering and uh, material science community, and I've been a data part-time data steward since uh, two or three years for a cluster of excellence there. And we have been trying to um, push another uh, distributed data management solution named uh, DTool um, since a couple of years over there. So I'm DTool outside, and so is uh, Ashwin here who is working with me. But we were very curious to uh, learn from each other or uh, understand how other such solutions are working and want to avoid that solution that we have been using and pushing to develop towards another island solution, and that's uh, why we are here. Oh. Thank you. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Abhishek Dasgupta, I'm from Oxford, I'm a research software engineer, and I've been using Git on X for 10 years, thanks Joey, like I've been one of the early users. Uh, I've never really got around to Datalad, so I want to learn more about Datalad, and this distribution is perfect because I'm like helping, collaborating with other people to build a clinical data platform uh, for researchers to easily access clinical data. And I already see there are some talks of the schedule about that and how specifically clinical data can be shared, but while also keeping it in a federated access platform so that people don't get access to it, which is not really open data, but it needs to be not open, but also fair. So how do you bridge that also? Um, so yeah, I think, Data light could perfectly be a candidate for for the kind of thing I'm building, so yeah, glad to meet you all. Uh. Uh, hi, I'm Markus Katharina Brechtel. I uh, work at the University Hospitals of Cologne and Frankfurt and um, we are building clinical research platforms for the university medicine in Germany. And I'm pretty interested in use cases where uh, you could use data led to, um, 
to manage non-public data and to make uh, non-public executions uh, to be more reproducible uh, and also like federated um, execution systems that are built upon this. Uh, we will we'll have a talk about this, but I'm very interested uh, to connect to people that are uh, working on um, on this kind of problem area. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Hey. Hi, uh, I'm Jan Bücher from uh, University of Bonn and uh, Tübingen. And uh, I'm mostly here to just celebrate uh, how amazing Git Annex and DataLed are, like for me. And, yeah, <laughs> because um, I'm doing my PhD and um, it was a, a, a giant eye-opener for me and, and, a, and a relief to, to find Git Annex finally. Um, because because it uh, it helps you uh, with with just staying in control of your data uh, and you don't lose your files anymore because some random USB stick breaks or um, yeah m managing field data doing backups and it's just uh, purely amazing and this is why I'm here. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. <laughs> okay, we still have time. If you want to speak, then. Raise your voice or raise your hand. And indeed, it's amazing to hear all these stories and how common they are to pretty much how we felt when we started to work on DataLed. And also, kind of maybe what if, if one thing we get out from this meeting is like a friend of mine, also in his 40s, he says, like, Okay, we shouldn't aim for big projects because he's like, Oh, I'll demolish half of the house and I'll build a new foundation. We'll do baby steps, right? So even it's like learning how to do basic Git Annex, you know, management, that's already goes way forward, right? If we establish bridge the gaps between those islands, right, we have tools. We, we, sometimes we don't want to switch a tool, but we want that tool to work with another tool, right? So how do we make all those connections work? And they don't have to be grandiose projects, but little things, right? How do we train one? clinician, right, even to download data which is shared somewhere on some website, right? Those baby steps are important, I think, and overall they build up the story to something more grandiose at the end. So that would be my take. You didn't ask for my feedback, but here you are. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, for me, this, this, is, this is the perfect situation that, that, uh, that we had hoped for. So it's a, we're all from from somewhere different different backgrounds and and we had the hope to uh, to uh, you know break out of the the academic bubble at least a little uh with that meeting i hope this this is going to work for us because the the, the good ideas always come from the outside and and the the thing that is amazing for me after i don't know 10 years of data light approximately is that every time you end up with something that you think is a, is a nice solution that should work for a lot of people then you learn that it's not the case and <laughs> you go go from there so I, I hope that 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 we can we can take a lot of stuff uh, ideas um, out of out of this meeting and then and, and do something good uh, about this um, I would say um, we, we we talk a little about uh, some logistics of the meeting before we then get into the uh, the exciting parts um, and and the individual talks and um, maybe Adina you can come on stage and, and do that. Yeah, before we start, before it gets interesting, let me quickly walk you through the boring logistics. So we are at the Haus der Universität here in Düsseldorf. Again, thanks to this awesome location for having us. During the conference, so during the next two days, we will be in this space here downstairs, which is the main event hall. But during the hackathon on Saturday, if you're a part of that, we will not be down here. We will be at the, on the third floor in meeting rooms for A, for B, and three. Um, if you need toilets, <laughs> they are right uh, down that hallway for the days that we are downstairs. For the hackathon, we will have also toilets, I think, in the third floor, um, definitely nearby. And in case you need some privacy for nursing, for prayer, uh, 
whatever, there is in the, on the third floor as well uh, what is called the lecturer's office, which you can use whenever you, you kind of need privacy. Don't abuse it. Uh, like, don't have a private five people meeting there. There are couches. Go uh, do that at, at the coffee table. Be social. Invite people around, right? But if you, if you have something that, that needs privacy, do feel free to go upstairs, take the lecturer's office, and have yourself some privacy. Um, for the technical setup, if you need network, uh, then you can either connect to EduRome via your academic institution or the HHU network. I have details how to connect to that on the next slide. You can snap a picture. You can also find me. I have the passwords on me. If you need it, let me know. If you are a speaker, then you will be able to connect your uh, hardware via USB-C, HDMI, or VGA. I hope that works for everyone. If not, let us know. We'll figure out a solution. And if there's a coffee break or a lunch break prior to your talk, do take the chance to test it so that we can have smooth transitions in between talks. And we coordinate our little meeting via chat rooms. If you are not part of those chat rooms yet, uh, Scan the QR code, it will take you to the distributes uh, matrix space where you can join the various chat rooms that we use for coordination. It includes the chat rooms for anonymous Q&A for the talks, uh, where the remote participants that are watching the live streams, but also those participants here on site that may not want their voice to be heard in the live streams can submit their questions uh, anonymously, and then obviously, very important, it's meant for organizing the pub or dinner place after the conference, uh, for chatting about hackathon projects, and whatever else is on your mind. This is the important information about the network. So it's called HHU, the login and the password you can see on screen. Uh, in case this does not work for you, I have all of the information on me. Uh, approach me at any point. I'm happy to share it again. Uh, and in the, um, in the collaborative uh, photo collection that I'm going to be sharing in a few slides, you will also find the screenshot with this information. Uh, so I hope everyone was able to snap a picture. Cool. You can find the conference schedule on our website, and we recommend Gigity to, to view it. Um, we have organized some coffee that you can find upstairs uh, for the conference duration, and then further upstairs on the third floor during the hackathon. And when you get hungry, we don't have food around apart from cookies, but all of Dusseldorf provides much better food than we could possibly provide. So uh, we encourage you to form little groups and explore the vibrant culinary la landscape that this uh, city has to offer. You've already seen it in the schedule. We have organized the conference quite loosely. We are going to have little sessions that are composed of up to four talks, and then they are followed by a panel of those speakers contributing to the sessions. And there it is, uh, you know, whatever the speakers essentially prefer, whether they want to have a QA right after their talk in the panel, whether it might be an open discussion. And we have moderators for these sessions to guide through uh, those parts of the conference. And we have some time in the conference schedule on Friday afternoon to accommodate an unconference. So if something springs to your mind, if you get an idea, if you have something that you suddenly want to talk about, do feel free to post it in one of the chat rooms that we have, and we will find a spot for you to present your idea, to find collaborators, uh, and so forth. We are going to be taking a group photo today before the lunch break. So even though you might be hungry, don't head out right away if you want to be on the group photo. We're going to do that just after the last session before the lunch break. And there is another QR code that I invite you to scan. Uh, this leads you to an online um, 
photo sharing collection something that Jarek just created. If you take pictures, obviously, only if you have obtained the people's that permission to take pictures from this conference, then you can upload it there for everyone to share so that we all go home with nice memories. And for the hackathon, if uh, you have a project to pitch, then uh, feel free to pitch ideas into Matrix or the GitHub Distributes repositories. Um, there are already a few PRs open, I think, but uh, this is something that's supposed to uh, you know, grow dynamically over the course of the next two days. And that's it. So with this, the boring part is done. I will hand over to Stefan, who will lead into the first proper session of this conference.